Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm David Dorfman. I'm an attorney here in New York, and I represent the 12 folks who were charged with uh, trespass and resisting arrest and, uh, regarding a demonstration that uh, took place on um, December 8th, right, at, uh, at or near the Spectra site in Verplank, New York. So um, we just, we did the arraignment at 3 in the morning on the morning of Friday the, the 9th, and uh, today is Monday the 12th, and this is our first control date in court, and um, the case was just adjourned. There was no offer, uh, a plea bargain offer from the DA. The judge didn't seem interested in giving us any idea what he would do with the case if we, you know, put it in his lap. So the case has been adjourned till January 23rd, and we're filing motions to dismiss the case based on problems with the DA's documents. Um, very technical, very boring. I know, I'm sure you don't want to hear about it. Um, the good thing is, is that the uh, the, the 12 uh, people who are charged don't have to be there in court, and probably won't have to be in court the next adjournment as well, uh, because this judge excuses uh, defendants when motion practice is taking place. So uh, it's all you know wizardry of the law and very secret, and nobody understands it but lawyers. But that is what's happening. Uh, for the next couple of months, uh, and then we'll see where we are. Um, I'm hoping that we win our motion to dismiss, and that puts the DA's office in a very kind of bad position in terms of them going forward. Um, oh, we're in the way. There's somebody who needs to walk through. So um, if you have any further questions, I'm happy to answer them, unless I can. Sure. Um, someone was mentioning that the judge refused to allow any constitutional language such as First Amendment rights? All right, so there, everybody was issued an order of protection, which was basically what they call a stay-away order to protect a particular person uh, who is uh, the uh, site su supervisor for Spectra. And uh, so um, I knew that was going to happen, and the DA told me in advance, and uh, uh, I didn't see any fruitful way of um, you know, objecting to it other than in terms of its scope. Clearly, if the guy feels endangered physically or in some way, um, you know, if he if he makes the application, the judge was certainly going to issue an order of protection. The real issue was, was it going to make it difficult, if not impossible, for these uh, folks to exercise their First Amendment rights and and demonstrate in the future? Um, and so, uh, if you look at the language of of the of the order of protection. It could be construed broadly as to preclude them from, for instance, uh, you know, demonstrating on a public sidewalk perfectly lawfully, but within uh, some proximity of a spectra site, because uh, at least allegedly this guy is site supervisor of every spectra site in the world, um, which uh, seems to me to be ridiculous. I don't believe this judge has jurisdiction to issue an order of protection that would apply outside of New York State in any event. Um, also, if you look closely at the document, um, it keeps mentioning the name Matthew Clark, Matthew Clark. So uh, I don't think that means that a person who, um, let's say, is demonstrating at a spectra site um, out in the Midwest um, is in violation of the order of protection uh, just because Matthew Clark might be there or might not be there. Um, the orders of protection are not construed yeah, so, you know, broadly as to, you know, allow for an arrest based on would haves could haves should haves Basically, it's putting the person on notice that if you know Matthew Clark is at a particular location, stay away from that location. And I'm assuming they're not going to tell us where Matthew Clark is, right? So I don't think anybody is in real danger. What the judge did say is that if I do have a First Amendment claim, to, to, to voice, it will only arise if somebody in fact gets arrested for violating the order of protection. And at that point, I can raise my First Amendment um, uh, arguments. Um, I asked him to uh, basically redraft the order of protection to include a carve out for First Amendment um, uh, activity, and he refused to do that. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think it matters. I mean, we don't need a judge to sign the uh, to, to, to change an order of protection to reflect the First Amendment. The First Amendment is in place either way. It's there. It was there before this judge was born. It'll be there after this judge passes. So I'm not really that worried about it. Um, everybody here is charged is a very smart person, I've learned, and uh, can figure out for themselves what is behavior that's probably a little too risky and a behavior that uh, is just as effective and not so risky.